Tell them what I could. I know every move of your game, Holmes. You can do nothing before Monday. You hope to place me in the dock. I tell you that I will never stand in the dock. You hope to beat me. I tell you that you will never beat me. If you are clever enough to bring destruction upon me, rest assured that I shall do as much to you. So spoke Professor Moriarty. That odious name linked forever with my friend Sherlock Holmes. My name is Watson, Dr. Watson. It was my privilege to share the adventures of Sherlock Holmes. And here I will tell you about the final problem. I recorded my feelings about it at the time. And despite all that has happened since, it remains the most profound shock I have ever endured. In an incoherent, and as I deeply feel, an entirely inadequate fashion, I have endeavored to give some account of my strange experiences in the company of Mr. Sherlock Holmes. It was my intention to have stopped there, and to have said nothing of that event which has created a void in my life which the lapse of two years has done little to fill. My hand has been forced, however, by the recent letters in which Colonel James Moriarty defends the memory of his brother. But I alone know the absolute truth of the matter. And I am satisfied that the time has come when no good purpose is to be served by its suppression. It may be remembered that after my marriage, the very intimate relations which had existed between Holmes and myself became to some extent modified. He still came to see me from time to time when he desired a companion in his investigations. But these occasions became less and less, until I find that in the year 1890 there were only three cases of which I retain any record. During the winter of that year and the early spring of 1891, I saw in the papers that he'd been engaged by the French government upon a matter of supreme importance from which I gathered that his stay in France was likely to be a long one. It was with some surprise, therefore, that I saw him walk into my consulting room upon the evening of that 24th of April. Good evening, my dear Watson. Holmes, bless my soul. I'm delighted to see you. Oh, but you're, you're so pale, Holmes. You, you've lost so much weight. I think you know me well enough, Watson, to understand that I'm by no means a nervous man. At the same time, it's stupidity rather than courage not to recognize danger when it's close upon you. Of course. Bless me, Holmes. Your knuckles, they're, they're bleeding. Yes. Uh, oh, that reminds me. I must beg you to be so unconventional as to let me leave presently by scrambling over your back garden wall. You've been fighting with some villains. They're waiting for you outside. Just so. Um, is Mrs. Watson in? No, no. She's away, visiting. Indeed? Then you're alone? Quite. Well, that makes it the easier for me to propose that you should come away with me for a week. Away? Where to? The continent. Whereabouts? Oh, anywhere. It's all the same to me. Holmes, I've been summoned on some pretty odd errands with you in my day, but this is the first time you've suggested anything in the nature of an aimless holiday. If there's something behind all this, then I think you'd better tell me. You've never heard of Professor Moriarty. Moriarty? There. There's the genius and the wonder of the thing. Hmm? This man pervades London. That's what puts him on a pinnacle in the records of crime. I tell you, Watson, if I could free society of that man, I should feel that my own career had reached its summit. I should be prepared to turn to some more placid line in life. He's the organizer of half that is evil and nearly all that is undetected in this great city. Really? At the age of 21, he wrote a treatise on the binomial theorem, which has been acclaimed all over Europe. 21? Yes. On the strength of it, he won the mathematical chair at one of our smaller universities. To all appearance, he had a brilliant career before him. Had? What went wrong? Nature's other gift to him was a, a criminal strain of the most diabolical kind. Mm -hmm. Instead of his extraordinary mental powers overcoming this, they increased it, making it infinitely more dangerous. At any rate, dark rumors gathered round Moriarty in this university town, and eventually he was compelled to resign his chair. Yes, he came to London and set up as an army coach. But you say you've penetrated all his secrets now, Holmes. Well, surely that, that, that's the end of him. Precisely. 
Well, then, in three days' time, the professor and all the principal members of his gang will be in the hands of the police. Then will come the greatest criminal trial of the century, followed, I believe, by the rope for all of them. In three days, you say? Yes. And yet you're here to suggest we go off to Europe and you don't care where? My nerves are fairly broke for It's nothing better. But I must confess to a start when, this morning, I saw the very man who had been so much in my thoughts standing there on the threshold of my room. Pray take a chair, Professor. I can spare you five minutes if you have anything to say. All that I have to say has already crossed your mind. Then possibly my answer has crossed yours. You stand for? Absolutely. No, you keep your hand from your pocket. Ah, dear me, Mr. Holmes, I only wish to get out my memorandum book. There are, are some dates. Ah, yes. I see that uh, you crossed my path on January the 4th. On the 23rd, you incommoded me. By the middle of February, I was seriously inconvenienced by you. Uh, to the end of March, I was absolutely hampered in my plans. And now, at the end of April, I find myself placed in such a position through your continual persecution that I'm in positive danger of losing my liberty. The situation is becoming an impossible one. Have you any suggestion to make? You must drop it, Mr. Holmes. You really must, you know. <sighs> I'm afraid that in the pleasure of this conversation, I'm neglecting business of importance which awaits me elsewhere. Well, well, well. well. It seems a pity that I have done what I could. I know every move of your game, Holmes. You can do nothing before Monday. You hope to place me in the dock. I tell you that I will never stand in the dock. You hope to beat me. I tell you that you will never beat me. If you are clever enough to bring destruction upon me, rest assured that I shall do as much to you. You have paid me several compliments, Mr. Moriarty. Let me pay you one in return when I say that if I were assured of the former eventuality, I would, in the interests of the public, cheerfully accept the latter. I can promise you the one, but not the other. Good day to you, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. What sort of a man is he? Professor Moriarty is not a man who lets grass grow under his feet. I went out about midday to transact some business in Oxford Street. As I passed the corner, which leads from Bentick Street onto the Welbeck Street crossing, a two-horse van furiously driven whizzed round and was on me like a flash. I sprang for the footpath and saved myself by the fraction of a second. But the van was gone in an instant. <laughs> I kept to the pavement after that, I can tell you. Don't blame you. But as I walked down Deer Street, a brick came down from the roof of one of the houses. It shattered to fragments at my feet. Holmes, this is dreadful. I took a cab after that and reached my brother's rooms in Pell Mell where I spent the day. Now I've come round to see you, and on my way here was attacked by a rough with a bludgeon. I knocked him down, and the police had him in custody. Well, now I know why you wanted to close the shutters and leave by the back door. Exactly. But look here, Holmes, why, why not spend the night here? No, my friend. I have my plans laid and all will be well. Matters have gone so far now that they can move without my help as far as the arrest goes. Though, of course, my presence will be necessary later for a conviction. Of course, yes. I really cannot do better than get away for the next few days until the police can act. So, it would be a great pleasure to me if you could accept my invitation to come to the continent. Well... The practice is quiet, <laughs> and I have an accommodating neighbor. <laughs> I should be glad to come with you, Holmes. And to start tomorrow morning, if necessary. Capital. Then these are your instructions, my dear Watson, mm -hmm. and I beg you to obey them to the letter. Very well. You will dispatch whatever luggage you intend to take by a trusty messenger, unaddressed, to Victoria tonight. Yeah. In the morning, you will send for a hansom, instructing your man to take neither the first nor the second which may present itself. Yes, I follow. Mm. You will jump into this hansom and drive to the strand end of the Lauda Arcade, handing the address to the cabby on a piece of paper with a request that he will not throw it away. Uh, yes. Have your fare ready. And the instant your cab stops, dash through the arcade, timing yourself to reach the other end at a quarter past nine. Nine. You will find a small brougham waiting by the curb, driven by a fellow with a heavy black cloak, tipped at the collar with red. 
Step in, and you will reach Victoria in time for the Continental Express. Where shall I meet you? At the station. The second first-class carriage from the front will be reserved for us. Hmm. That carriage is our rendezvous, then? Yes. And now, my dear Watson, I will take the liberty of finding my way out of your back door and across your garden into Mortimer Street. Until tomorrow, then. Tomorrow, Holmes. You may depend on me. Um, Senor, uh, uh, Padre, uh, this is reserved. <laughs> Senor, Reserved. Engaged. Ah, and engaged. See, see, and again. Oh, Lord. My friend and I. Friend? Mon ami. Amici. We are friends. Grazie, signore. Mi grazie. Oh, pray go first. Oh. What can have become of Holmes? My dear Watson, you haven't even condescended to say good morning. Good heavens, Holmes. How you startled me. <laughs> now, listen, Watson. Hmm? Every precaution is still necessary. I have reason to believe that. What is it? There he is, running along the platform. It's Moriarty himself. Oh. Yes, and we're going too fast now for him to jump aboard. Oh, he stopped running. Capital. Hmm. You see, with all our precautions, we've cut it rather fine. Well, at least I can now get out of this clerical guise. Let me give you a hand. I must say, Holmes, it's a remarkable disguise. Uh, they, uh, they must have lost my track completely after their bludgeon man was arrested. They've evidently taken the precaution of watching you, though. That's what has brought Moriarty to Victoria. You couldn't have made any slip in coming here. I did exactly what you advised, Holmes. Did you recognize the driver of your brother? Recognize? It was my brother, Mike Oh, no. It's an advantage to get about in such a case without taking a mercenary into your confidence. But now we must plan what we're to do about Moriarty. But surely we've shaken him off. And this is an express with an immediate connection with our boat. What can he do to us now? What I should do. But what? He will engage a special train in the shortest possible time. Our train stops at Canterbury for a while. Yeah. Then there's always at least a quarter of an hour's delay at the boat. He will catch us there. One would think we were the criminals. Let's have him arrested the moment he arrives. That would be to ruin the work of three months. We should get the big fish, but the smaller would dart right and left out of my net. Now, on Monday, we should have them all. Uh, what then? We shall get out at Canterbury. And? We must make a cross-country journey to New Haven and so over to Dieppe. Moriarty will again do what I should do. He will go on to Paris, trace our luggage there, and wait two days for us at the depot. In the meantime, we shall make our way at leisure into Switzerland via Luxembourg and Bar. <laughs> alighted at Canterbury, only to find that we should have to wait an hour before we could get a train to New Haven. We made our way to Brussels that night. We moved on the third day as far as Strasbourg. On the Monday morning, Holmes had telegraphed to the London police, and in the evening we found a reply waiting for us at our hotel room. Holmes tore it open and then, with a bitter curse, hurled it into the grate. They've secured the whole gang with the exception of Moriarty. I think you'd better return to England, Watson. Return to England? Whatever for? Because you'll find me a dangerous companion now. I shall most certainly do nothing of the kind, But, though. Watson, you must realize... Not that... another word, Holmes. We shall leave for Geneva this evening as a rain. For a charming week, we wandered up the valley of the Rhone... And then, by way of Interlaken, to my England. It was a lovely trip. But it was clear to me that never for one instant did Holmes forget the shadow which lay across him. I could tell by his quick glancing eyes and his sharp scrutiny of every face that passed us that he was well convinced that walk where we would, we could not walk ourselves clear of the danger which was dogging our footsteps. Once I remember a large rock which had been dislodged from a ridge clattered down and roared into the lake behind us. 
Holmes said nothing, but smiled at me with the air of a man who sees the fulfillment of that which he had expected. I think I may go so far as to say, Watson, that I have not lived wholly in vain. If my record were closed tonight, I could still survey it with equanimity. In over a thousand cases, I'm not aware that I've ever used my powers upon the wrong side. Your memoirs will draw to an end, Watson, upon the day that I crown my career by the capture or extinction of the most dangerous and capable criminal in Europe. <laughs> I shall be brief and yet exact in the little which remains for me to tell. It is not a subject on which I would willingly dwell. It was on the 3rd of May that we reached the little village of Maringen, where we put up at the Englisher Hof, then kept by Peter Steiler the Elder. At his advice, we set off next afternoon with the intention of spending the night at the hamlet of Rosenlaui. We had strict instructions, however, on no account to pass the falls of Reichenbach without making a small detour to see them. It is indeed a, a fearful place. The torrent, swollen by melting snow, plunges into a tremendous abyss from which the spray rolls up like smoke from a burning house. The shark into which the river hurls itself is an immense chasm lined by glistening coal-black rock and narrowing into a creaming, boiling pit of incalculable depth. We stood near the edge, peering down at the gleam of the breaking water far below us against the black rocks. The narrow path has been cut halfway round the fall to afford a complete view, but it ends abruptly, and the traveller has to return as he came. We had turned to do so when a Swiss lad came running along this path, calling urgently. Herr Doktor! Herr Doktor! What's this, Holmes? Who is he? I don't recognize him. He seems to know you, though. Herr Doktor, I have... I have all the way around. Take your time, my boy. Get, get your breath. No, Herr Doktor. There, there is no time. The English woman... She will die. English woman? What English woman? It's the hotel. It's the English hotel. You've seen no English woman there, have we, Holmes? There was a young woman sitting beside the window at luncheon. I took off her friend. Yeah, yeah, it's a young woman. She has the consumption. She starts to bleed. What's that? Sounds like a hemorrhage. I, I, I must go at once, Holmes. Oh, one moment, boy. Who sent you to us? My uncle, Herr Steiler. Why did he not summon the Swiss doctor whose name plate I saw in the village? Yeah, yeah, he has. But the lady is crying and calling in English that she, someone English, must see before she will die. Holmes, um, you must go, Watson. It's unthinkable to refuse the request of a fellow countrywoman dying in a strange land. Yes, I, I agree entirely, but will you come with me, Holmes? Well, we managed to stick together from London and nothing has occurred to you so far. I should not like to think... No, that... no, no, Watson. Your duty is plain. I think I shall stay here a little while until your return. This lad can wait with me in your place. Mm. If I don't see you within the hour, say, I shall walk on slowly over the hill to Rosenlaue, where we will meet again this evening. Very well, Holmes. You will take great care. I shall take care. I'll hurry back as soon as I can. Herr Styler. Herr Styler. Dr. Watson, you have been running. Where, where, where is she? I, I trust she's no worse. Excuse me, doctor, but I do not understand. The, the English woman, the, the, the one who's ill with consumption. There is some mistake, doctor. What? We have no English lady here at present. The, the message you sent, the, the, the boy, your nephew. I have no nephew, doctor. What? And a message? I sent no message to you. Great heavens, they've caught up with us after all. Doctor. Ha has any stranger arrived here since we left? Oh, one only, uh, an Englishman. But I think you must know him. Huh? He asked if you and Herr Holmes were lodging with me. Ah, say no more. Where did he go? I believe he went to take a walk. Herr Styler, there isn't a moment to lose. I beg you to accompany me to the Reichenbach Falls immediately. Oh, willingly, Doctor, but may I ask... I will explain as we go, but we must not delay one further second. The chances are we may yet be in time. Uh, there's no, 
No sign of him. Pray heaven that he's gone on safely to Rosenlau. Uh, doctor, uh, these footmarks in the wet ground. Oh, yes, yes, I see them, but great heavens, they go right to the edge of the chasm and stop. There has been fighting here. See how the ground is all disturbed and these plants crushed and broken. Oh, no, no. It, it can't be. It can't. I'm afraid, Doctor, there can be no other conclusion. Oh. But the one side is sheer rock wall, and the other a chasm. No. No, no, it, it, it's impossible. Holmes! 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 You must keep from the edge, Doctor. There is nothing you can do. Oh, I, I fear you're right. He's gone. See, but here is something. What is it? A Let cigarette, me see. A cigarette case placed on this boulder. Oh, it's his. Give it to me, please. Oh, look. There's a paper. <laughs> He'll have gone on to Rosenlaui after all. He, he's left this message for me to find. You'll see, Herr Steiler. Does it say so, Dr. Watson? Oh, just a moment. Just, 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 just a moment. Let me read. My dear Watson, I write these few lines through the courtesy of Mr. Moriarty who awaits my convenience for the final discussion of those questions which lie between us. I am pleased to think that I shall be able to free society from any further effects of his presence, though I fear that it is at a cost which will give pain to my friends, and especially my dear Watson, to you. I have already explained to you, however, that my career had in any case reached its crisis and that no possible conclusion to it could be more congenial to me than this. Indeed, if I may make a full confession to you, I was quite convinced that the message from Meiringen was a hoax, and I allowed you to depart on that errand under the persuasion that some development of this sort would follow. Tell Inspector Patterson that the papers which he needs to convict the gang are in pigeonhole M, done up in a blue envelope and inscribed Moriarty. I made every disposition of my property before leaving England and handed it to my brother, Mycroft. Pray give my greetings to Mrs. Watson and believe me to be... My dear fellow, very sincerely yours, Sherlock Holmes. 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 may suffice to tell the little that remains. An examination by experts leaves little doubt that a personal contest between the two men ended as it could hardly fail to do in such a situation, in their reeling over into the chasm locked in each other's arms. Any attempt at recovering the bodies was absolutely hopeless. And there, deep down in that dreadful cauldron of swirling water and seething foam, will lie for all time the most dangerous criminal and the foremost champion of the law of their generation. The Swiss youth was never found again, but there can be no doubt that he was one of the numerous agents whom Moriarty kept in his employ. As to the gang, the evidence which Holmes had accumulated completely exposed their organization. But of their terrible chief, few details came out during the proceedings. And if I have now been compelled to make a clear statement of his career, it is due to those injudicious champions who endeavored to clear his memory by attacks upon him, whom I shall ever regard as the best and the wisest man whom I've ever known.
The final problem describes perhaps the most famous death in all the stories of Sherlock Holmes. For in this, the greatest detective in literature died by a deliberate act of the writer who had created him, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. In real life, my name is Norman Shelley. My friend Carlton Hobbs played Sherlock Holmes and I was Dr. Watson. Michael Hardwick wrote the script for this BBC production from London. And for the present, let's just leave it as Conan Doyle himself wished it to be left. That after the final problem, there were to be no more adventures of Sherlock Holmes. What actually happened, I'll explain next time we meet.